we've just drawn a bivariate table or created a bivariate table a while ago for gender and favorite food type based upon 25 people who visited your house and had a delightful time and told you what their favorite food was as they left. The question is, is there a difference between males and females relative to what they want or what they like to eat? This would be important information to know because later on, if you have a party just of females, the question is, which of those foods would you not serve? Or if you had a party just of males, which of those foods would you not serve to that group? So we're going to take this information and learn to draw three different kinds of graphs which help us visualize what's happening. I've taken the data and I've summarized it into a small table that I, so I don't have to flip back and forth. The first of these that we're going to draw is something called a cluster bar graph. Okay, A cluster bar graph is used for bivariate data. Okay. They can be drawn horizontally or vertically. The image we're looking for is the bars that you draw are going to be in clusters rather than individuals. Way back in the very first graph that we drew, Notice that each of those M&M colors had a single bar separated by the others, which represents the, how many of that color you had. In a cluster bar graph, what you need to imagine is taking three of these and pushing them together, taking three of those and pushing them together. So what we're going to do is a cluster bar graph ends up looking like this. You'll have a cluster of bars which touch each other and another cluster of bars over here which touch each other but there will be a gap between the clusters. So this is a, it's a, it's bar, it's a bar, it's a bar graph with clusters of bars. Okay. Same thing, the bars have to be the same width. The gaps between the bars have to be the same width. You may have three clusters, four clusters. You may have four bars in a cluster. You may have eight bars in a cluster. It just depends upon your problem. Okay. I'm going to draw the bars vertically because it's easier. So, my frequency scale. Okay. When drawing the graph, you need to examine the body of your table. Remember I told you these, these were your data values. You need to examine your data values and you need to find the highest frequency. Okay. What is the highest frequency in your table? That tells you the frequency of your scale. So we're going to go up to six on our frequency scale. So find my ruler here. Okay. Leave room for a title. Okay. So let's say call it seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Maybe down to there. Okay. Make this a right angle, make it neat. I'm going to go way out to the edge of the paper this time. Okay. My frequency scale, let me put my numbers here, or my marks. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, four, two, frequency. Be sure to put your scale and your label. Okay. Across the bottom, you got to think for a second, okay, what is it going to look like? Hmm. I have two genders and four food types. So you can either have two clusters with four bars each, or you can have four clusters with two bars each. The difference between these is what are you trying to emphasize? Are you trying to emphasize the difference between food types or the difference between gender preferences? I prefer this one because males and females do typically have differences in food type preferences. So we're going to draw two clusters of four bars. Okay, 
to get two clusters of four bars, I'm going to need a gap, and then one, two, three, four bars, and then a gap, and then one, two, three, four bars. So really I've got like one, two, three, four, probably like ten measurements I've got to make out to the side. So using my scale, I wonder if I can get out to ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it's going to be way out there. Okay. Well, let's start there. Okay. I'm going to put my gap, and then I'm going to have a bar for Chinese, American, Mexican, and Italian. All these are female, four bars for females. And then another gap, say this wide. Not the same, as doesn't have to be the same as that. And then I need um, one, two, three, four bars for male. Okay. So let's see. Starting this out, there were three females. The first set of bars, one, two, three, four, these four, one, two, three, four, are going to be for females. So the first one represents Chinese. So three females like Chinese. Okay. So three females like Chinese. Maybe I can do it that way. Three like Chinese. Only one liked American. Four liked Mexican. And two liked Italian. Okay. So, you gotta be careful here. The first bar was three units high. The second bar is only one, so you got to drop way down to one here and put your one bar across here. Then jump back up to four, and then down to two. Okay. This is your female cluster. Now we're going to skip a gap and do the males. Okay. Let's see. Two males like Chinese. So here and here. Six Americans, so we have two, six, four, three. Two. to six, then four for the next group, and three for the last group. In this case, you have your information drawn. This is your female cluster. This is your male cluster, gapped between them. You don't you don't touch them together. Okay. There's a lot of information you need to try to put down here. So so we can figure out a better way to do this. Let me get some other colored markers. There's no particular order. In each cluster, the first bar represents Chinese, American, Mexican, and Italian. So I'm going to color this bar for Chinese, and I color the corresponding bar over here black for Chinese. Then I'm going to color this one blue for American, or green for American, this one green for American. In this type of graph, the use of color helps you more easily compare 
the the qualities or characteristics for the two different clusters. Okay. And red for Italian. Okay. This particular graph has makes great use of color. Okay. One thing that might have happened is, let's suppose that no females liked American. If no females liked American, then this bar would be gone. If it were gone, then you would not see any green here, which highlights the green there saying, wow, you got all these guys who like American, but no females like American. So a missing bar is obvious by its absence, or we say conspicuous by its absence. Okay? But in this case, all both genders do like both kinds of food. In this case, you do want to identify the, the blocking or cluster. So this is female. Females. This is males. Okay. You and I have made the table, the graph, but we don't. So we know what these represent, but your reader doesn't. So somewhere up here, you need to put a legend. Or, and it probably would be better to put it, I don't know if I can get it over here or not. Uh, you don't really want to put it in the central part of your table. I should have had more room, but I'm going to put it here just for convenience, but it would be better to be put over here. Okay. And there's probably several different designs you can use. Okay. You'll have black, which would be Chinese. Okay. And then you would have American, Mexican, Mexican.